Elon Musk's new Starship prototype has inspired me to want to make my own. Now I have really big plans for this project, so it's going to be a multi-video series if it goes well. But first I have to build my own flying prototype. Elon's using metal for his, but I'm going to be using foam board. Now ours is brown because we've worked with Adam's Ready Board to develop a water resistant one and we're gonna have a white version coming out soon. And it's what we build all of our crazy projects with from the giant flying tank to a UFO and even an 18 foot battleship that I sat in in the water while shooting other foam board airplanes out of the sky. Our philosophy is to use common materials because, frankly, you guys can build crazy stuff like this too. And if you're getting into the hobby, we have everything that you need, including a beginner series of videos to show you what you need to do to have success flying RC planes and drones. So first what I'm doing is taking the plants for our old bullet bill and cutting it out on the laser. Now you don't have to use a laser, you can use a razor blade, but this is just faster for us. From here it's a matter of peeling off some of the paper to curl things around, using hot glue to glue everything together, and pretty soon I've got a rocket shape. I really feel like Elon Musk right now. Just like super rich <laughs> and really smart. And a big rocket on my table. Look at my rocket go up. See my rocket going up. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, what do you think so far? Dude, that looks sick. That's nice. So, I'm just making shapes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. I don't know what we want to do, but I was thinking potentially motor pod pointing that way on both of these. Yeah. And these are just fixed wing, and then you have differential thrust. Yeah. And then on the back we have our... So what we can also do is I think we can fix it. I would almost, if we're gonna not make these move, we can use our tough tilts. And so we can also do the differential this way, but then the whole motor can swing this way. These are our tough tilts right here. So this is on our old tricopters. These were the indestructible tough tilts. So the way our tough tilt works is we can mount the motor right on the top here. And by simply putting a servo on the back end, we now have the ability to drive the motor one direction or the other. Just put it down here have the motor on it with a six inch blade. We could pitch the whole nose up so we could take it off. You have like yaw, pitch, roll. Everything, yeah. And yeah, pitch, pitch roll. roll. That's all and, you need. And bank. You could also put it at the bottom too, technically. Yeah, if we have thrust closer to the top end of the center of gravity, then you have the whole pendulum stabilizing it. If it's at the bottom, then it's gonna like swing down. It's like a real rocket. All right, so it's a super exciting time to be alive with SpaceX doing all the things that they're doing to push the limitations of science and technology and engineering to take us to space. While we're on the subject of science and technology, I wanted to take this time to tell you about our sponsor for this video, and that is KiwiCo. Now, KiwiCo creates awesome little crates like this that teaches kids of many different ages all about STEAM, or science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Now, my daughter Violet and I here, we just got done putting together the koala crate here. This isn't our first First one. We've had a ton of fun with these in the past and we were super excited when we had the opportunity to work with KiwiCo on this video because it couldn't be more suitable for the future minds of tomorrow. The projects are desired to spark creativity, tinkering, and learning in kids ages 0 all the way up to 16, which is pretty awesome. All projects, inspiration, and activities are created by a team of product designers in-house. They are rigorously tested by kids of all ages to make sure that they are a ton of fun and also teach them all kinds of different lessons. Every crate includes all the supplies needed for that month's projects, detailed easy to follow written for kids instructions, and educational magazine to learn even more about that crate's theme. The Koala Crate, which is what we use, is ages two to four, and it delivers fun hands-on activities to engage the natural curiosity and creativity of preschoolers in play-based learning. Violet and I's crate this month was ocean themed, so we had an awesome fishing game where Violet got to catch all kinds of sea creatures from the ocean, and it all packed up in a little fold-up bag, which is pretty cool, so she could take it with 
with her. And then we also decorated some marine mosaics, which is little sea creatures that we got to decorate, kind of like stained glass, but it was all common materials like paper and tissue paper. So you don't have to worry about the kids getting hurt. So again, it's because of awesome sponsors like KiwiCo that we're able to do what we do, but also KiwiCo is an awesome company and we're all about it because it's helped shaping the minds of tomorrow. My daughter and I, we have a blast with it every month and we're always excited when we get a new KiwiCo box in the mail. Do us a huge favor and check out the link in the description below. Not only does that help us out a ton because you're helping out our sponsor, but also if you use the code kiwico.com slash flight test, you can actually start your subscription and get your first box, which is a $19.95 value for free, which is pretty cool. Again, that's kiwico.com slash flight test to get your free first box of your monthly subscription. So again, huge shout out to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video, but also thanks to you guys. We couldn't be thankful enough and let's get back to building this starship. Violet, you wanna see a starship fly? Uh, first I got stuff. First I got stuff. First when I got stuff, when I start, when I stop playing. When you're done playing, okay. The easy thing about this build is all I'm doing is gluing flat foam cut into shapes onto a cylinder. So it's a really quick and easy build without even moving parts. The hard part is, is I have to line up these flat surfaces exactly perpendicular with the fuselage. Otherwise the rocket will do like corkscrews and twists and be uncontrollable in the sky. So I'm trying to eyeball this up so that it's perfectly vertical as I glue each of the pieces on. All right, dude. Dude, that looks amazing. <laughs> so, where's the CG on a Starship? I don't know where it's supposed to be. About there is where it is. So we, we throw around the acronyms all the time, but CG stands for center of gravity. And if you can get the center of gravity, basically it's balance point in the right place by either adding nose weight or tail weight, you can pretty much get anything to fly with enough thrust. You wanna chuck it? Yeah, let's chuck it. Start small. I don't know how you chuck some. <laughs> Ooh, that's okay. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> okay, a little further every time. All right, here we go. <laughs> Missile to the chest. Dude, that's amazing. Here we go. Oh my god. That's fantastic. <laughs> Dude, okay, one more. One more, one more. Hail Mary. Dude, that's awesome. Oh, and you got the boom on there too. I didn't even notice that. Put our tough tilt, tough tilt right dude. This brings there. me back. This is the tough tilt we used to use on our tricopters way back in the early days, the golden age of multi-rotors. I heard Elon talking about it in an interview, and he was saying that the rocket, they literally just moved the rocket engines to control the, the rocket. Yeah. So we're gonna have propellers. It's gonna so, be awesome. Josh, will I need to put any elevators or ailerons or anything? Just the, these? The goal is not to have to do that. Yeah, the goal, I think we're flying like a rocket and then when we enter, we can actually make it fall just like Elon's, but then at the last moment, kick it out. And that's where these guys will really do well because when we have to kick that nose up, we can drop it out, a little bit of power, and it'll, it'll do that. <laughs> it's gonna be nice. cool. Three-way five. <laughs> <laughs> what plugs into where? All right, so this is kind of new territory, but my guess would be we're kind of making a flying wing with two motors, if you think about it. So that way we'll have yaw, we'll have pitch, we'll have roll. So, so where do I plug the so two servos? <laughs> plug the two servos into one into aileron, one into elevator. And okay. then the motors go ahead and put one in the throttle and one into aux one. Aux one, okay. Yep. No access hatch, that's, that's funny. I'm happy you're skinny. <laughs> This is kind of awkward. Wish me luck. Live and you learn. Okay. I got one. There you go. Uh, okay. Got it. Look at that. It's beauteous. So I'll be using one of our F-Pack radial motors. This motor is primarily used on quads, but we've used it on Bullet Bill, and here I'm gonna be putting it on our tough tilts. I've got the motors on, I got servos on. I've got everything plugged into the receiver. Does this just mean that I need a battery and we can fly? Yep. <laughs> that is wicked cool. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
This is why I didn't want to help you. Because I actually don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, something moved. It's flat. Both of them are moving. You know, I've never set up differential ever in my life. I have two times. I forgot how to do it both times. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I didn't expect it to work. <laughs> That'll push the nose up. Right. That'll push the nose down. Yeah, that's right. That'll, That'll roll. Push that, yeah. Dude, that could be a new trendy dance. The airplane dance. <laughs> Alright, let's fly it. I'd like to meet Elon's test pilot, because that's basically me. I'm a, it's just on a smaller scale. So are we hovering it in here? A vertical takeoff is going to be harder than just like normal flight. Yeah. Vertical takeoff should be probably one of the last things we try. Do you, do you know? <laughs> so what's going on? It's got vertical at half throttle. Yeah. But it's torquing? Spinning. Oh. Let's go try it. I'm hoping that the Starship flies better than what I think this is gonna fly us. But if you wanna find out more about the Starship, there's a really great channel called The Everyday Astronaut, and he has a really good interview with Elon Musk where you can find out more. Maybe a battery hatch is in order. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> We're somewhat guessing on the CG, and we've got the CG just a little bit forward of center. So hopefully it's right. So you want to do a chuck test? Chuck test? It's feeling the wind coming. It's kind of terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, it's probably going to be better to try to launch it like an airplane as opposed to taking off like a rocket for the first time. <laughs> Once we establish if it works or not, then we can try things like the vertical takeoff, yeah. vertical landing. Um, Which did not work inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I ruin your rocket, man. <laughs> Here we go. Dude, you got this! Whoa. Whoa. What? Oh my gosh, That's look at it go! <laughs> oh! Nice landing. <laughs> How did you recover that, dude? I don't know what How did you do it? It was torquing. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was doing that on its own. Let's try again. I'm yeah. freaking out. I don't remember what happened. I don't know why it would do that. Should we try it again? Yeah. It's perfectly fine. You did a nice soft <laughs> landing. I didn't do that. It did it on its own. <laughs> you got any ideas? My thoughts, Jack. The fins on the top are going to get blanked out because it's kind of in a crowd this way. Is there any way to make it where it launches with the fins on the bottom? So fly upside down? Uh, what does your right and left look like? Do you check to make sure those are right? That's left, right? So that's no, this that's way? right. That's right. So that's going left right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was going all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> the funny part is Josh is secretly over here telling me, uh, he's like, I wonder if they got the controls backwards. Okay, so check it upside down. Ready, steady, go. It's upside down right now. Oh my gosh! Oh no! It's a turbo little sucker. <laughs> it was going up in outer space. <laughs> it's a rocket. It didn't have any uh, control. <laughs> it flew. It, I feel like at lower speeds, I don't feel like the thrust vectoring is like enough to keep that nose up. Oh. Actually, it's just the nose cone. It's just the hardest thing to make, that's all. Okay, the tough tilts seem to be fine. They're tough. <laughs> it's a little sad face, but no, that's repairable. We could try it again. <laughs> As is? Yeah. Yeah. Watch Maybe let Josh try to fly it? That sounds like a good idea. So what do you think, Josh? <laughs> a couple things I noticed here. The front end had to work really hard because there's a lot of weight. The motors in those little front canards couldn't do enough work to help it keep itself upright. So what I think we need to do is I think we need to take this battery and we need to, to move it further back 
So that way when we have this, it's more, more FCG than it needs to be. And hopefully the motors don't have as hard of a time to kind of keep it tracking where it needs to go. Are you ready? Good to go. There it goes. Into the power lines. Yes. Okay, it's flying. All right. Oh my god. There cool. we go. It's flying. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at it go. Dude, I think it's just the center of gravity. So the two did it. Dude, nice. It's awesome. <laughs> can you go can you go vertical, Josh? Oh. Whoa, it does not like staying vertical. That's going for there, there, there it goes. There it goes. You got it. Bye. <laughs> I like this. Just remember, yeah, when you turn the motors off, you have no control. Yes. <laughs> That's no right. Client. There's no control surface. It, yeah. I think this is the first like control surface free thing we've ever flown. Yeah. Now the question is, can you land it vertical? I don't think landing's gonna be that bad. It flies remarkably nice. He said vertical. Yeah, vertical. vertical. Oh. <laughs> like, like a spaceship oh, or a rocket. No. Dude, that's amazing. That's I'll really see cool. Fly this. Jeremy, you too. Okay. That was <laughs> first. <laughs> well, let me see if I can get like a high alpha. Go nutball action. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you gotta fly this. <laughs> I was about to say, hey Alex, hey Jerry, you gotta fly this. That's what you do with that nutball action. Something, something happened where instantly it's like, I'm done flying for you. <laughs> built a rocket, man. Yeah. <laughs> I built a flying rocket. rocket. That's awesome. That I built a flying rocket that flies on props, not rockets. So proof of concept, it worked. Yeah. Just got to rebuild the nose. And in the next videos, we're doing a whole series on this where we're going to keep upping the ante with each one. So subscribe to see all of those. Yeah. And if you guys haven't checked out our channel, we do crazy flying projects all the time. You can check those videos out here and we'll see you next time. The key is, is velocity. It likes to go fast. It's a rocket.